Hi there, and welcome to this video about how to upgrade from classic app path built with the SharePoint Alim model to modern web path built with SharePoint framework. First of all, and to set the context, you should keep into account that the SharePoint Alim model app path are an old extensibility model for the classic UI of SharePoint Online, and they are based on JavaScript, on the JavaScript object model of SharePoint, and eventually on jQuery, and they rely on HTML and CSS at low level. In the modern world, the client-side web parts of SharePoint Framework, on the contrary, are built using TypeScript and eventually React as the UI framework. They can rely on the Fluent UI of Microsoft and on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to have a better and fully integrated user experience with the modern SharePoint Online and Teams UI. Just for the sake of making an example, imagine that we have an add part to list the documents in a document library in SharePoint, and you want to upgrade it to a modern web part built with SharePoint Framework, as you can see in this couple of screenshots. How can you do that? Well, first of all, you need to keep into account that there is no conversion tool that you can use. So it is not possible to do something like right click on your mouse button and upgrade to SharePoint Framework. The technologies are different and the languages are different. So the modern world is really powerful, but you will have to create a fresh new web part in SharePoint Framework and you will eventually be able to reuse some of your code or logic, at least from an high level point of view in the new implementation built with SharePoint Framework. Of course, on the other side, if you will move to SharePoint Framework and the modern UI, you will find a lot of libraries, frameworks and tools which will heavily speed up your development process. And as such, you will see that it will take just a few moments to upgrade from the old add-in model to the new SharePoint Framework and modern development model. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can do that in practice. Let's assume we have a document library in a SharePoint Online site collection and we want to transform an already existing app part built with the SharePoint add-in model into a SharePoint framework web part which will list the documents in the library. So here you can see how the uh, SharePoint add-in model uh, app part looks like in the classic UI of SharePoint. And here you can see we have a list of all of the documents in the document library and we can click on uh, them to open the actual document. If we have a look at the implementation of the app part in the SharePoint Adding Model solution, we can see that we have a Visual Studio solution in which we have a client web part element in a feature framework file. And in this file, we have the definition of a client web part, which will target our list document web part.aspx page with some standard tokens in the URL accordingly to the SharePoint Adding Model development model. And we have a set of properties for the web part that you can use to configure the web part itself, like for example, a search filter text that we can provide to filter the documents uh, that the uh, app part will show to the user. Then we have uh, the actual page in which we do the rendering of the app part. And here, aside from some JavaScript client-side code to uh, just set the uh, UI of the uh, page, we have uh, a div with the ID list documents and with the loading and three dots as a placeholder while loading the document. The documents will be actually loaded in the list document JS file, which is the one we used to use in the SharePoint add-in model to uh, implement the actual logic under the cover of an app part. In this one, when the document is ready using a bit of jQuery, we get the host URL, the app URL and the search filter as it will be a query string parameter in the URL of the page that we are rendering. Then we use the JavaScript object model to get a reference to the client context and to get a reference to the host of the app that we are running through the SharePoint add-in model. So that once we have got a reference to the host web, we can list the document based on a search filter that's the one we get from the query string. And in the list document function, JavaScript function, we simply get by title using the JavaScript object model 
the documents uh, library with name documents and then if any uh, filter is provided by the user we build a camel collaborative application markup language query to filter the items and if not uh, we just build uh, on the fly a, a camel query which will give back to us all of the documents in the library and then uh, we render the output uh, in the uh, div which will hold the list of items in fact uh, when we are done with the retrieval of our content on list document succeeded, when we do the execute query async, we will simply uh, empty the list of documents and for every single document we will render an unordered list with a list item for every single document. And of course, in case of any failure, we will render the failure in the UI of the app part. That's the uh, old SharePoint in model implementation. Now, let's say that we want to create the same solution using the SharePoint framework. Well, first of all, we should trigger the creation of a SharePoint framework solution using the Yeoman generator for uh, Microsoft uh, SharePoint framework. And so yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint. By running this command, uh, we will start the scaffolding tool, which will provide us some questions. This could be the name of the solution we're going to create. We want to create a web part. We will have to provide a name for a web part, which can be, for example, list documents uh, uh, and this will become the name of our web part and it will be a web part based on react for example for the rendering of the ui so that using the react framework we will have a better user experience for our end users by doing that the scaffolding tool will start creating a bunch of source files and will start installing a bunch of npm packages on the solution that it, uh, it is going to create it will take a while and that's why I already created the solution for you so that we can speed up uh, the uh, video. And as such, let me move to this uh, solution that I already created for you. And here you can see how the solution got scaffolded by the Yeoman generator. And we can notice that we have an SRC folder in which we have all of the web parts and specifically our list documents web part. The web part in SharePoint framework is nothing more than a class which extends the base client side web part and which also uh, accepts a generic type which would be the type of the input properties, configuration properties of the web part. In our scenario, the configuration properties will be based on the search filter string that we also had in the SharePoint add-in model solution. But now it will behave slightly different in the SharePoint framework context. So we create a web part class which inherits from the base type and we configure the uh, configuration properties for the web part. As such, in the get, uh, sorry, get property pane configuration method, we have to configure that we want to make our search filter property available in the property pane of the web part so that it will be configurable by the user. Moreover, in the render method, which is a fundamental method of a SharePoint framework web part, uh, we render the output of our web part. And right here, we rely on React in order to load a React component, which will do the actual rendering of our web part. In order to do that, we provide a set of input arguments to the React component that we will dig into uh, really shortly uh, from now. And I provide here the search filter argument configured by the user, if any. And then we also provide the tenant name in which we are, the site ID and the web ID, so that the React component will know from where the uh, documents should be loaded from. And the tenant name, the site ID and the web ID are information that we can retrieve through the context property of this, which is the web part. And generally speaking, in SharePoint framework, you can always access the context property of the this component you are working on. And through that, you can access, for example, the page context to get the site URL, or you can get a reference to the web or to the site in which you are. Now, in order to render our web part, uh, we rely on a React component, which is defined in the components subfolder of my solution. Here we have a TSX file, which is the actual React component. And in fact, here we have a list document class, which extends react.component, which still does have a list of custom properties defined in this TypeScript file. And here we can see all of the properties that we were providing before in the render method of the web part. Now, what is really interesting is that in this solution, to have a better user experience, 
we uh, decided to install an npm package if you go to the package.json file of the solution you can see that we have a couple of packages the mgt react and the mgt spfx component by installing these two components and in the article associated to this video you can find detailed guidance about how to do that you can then leverage really uh, useful and powerful controls for rendering the ui of your web part and that's why in the React component to list the documents we get a reference to the file list uh, React component of the mgt react package and as such in the render method of our React component which is by the way the only method that we have in this component we simply retrieve all of the settings from these properties which represent the properties object that we provided right here in the render method of the web part and right after that we build the query to retrieve the document which will be a Microsoft Graph query and then we simply say using a bunch of HTML code that right here we want to render the file list React component of MGT with a specific file list query which will do the actual query using Microsoft Graph toward the uh, document library that we want to use as the source for our document and, will, uh, and which will render the documents in the output of the web part. The web part is already running in my environment, so I can switch to the modern UI of SharePoint Online and to the workbench, which is a page you have in any SharePoint Online site to test a web part. And by adding, uh, clicking on this plus button, adding the list document web part, we can see that this is the rendering of our new web part with the uh, nice UI of the MGT control. Here you can find additional links if you want to dig into the topics that we covered in this video. And like always, thank you.